Logan Gillen is with us, analyst at Jewel Financial, and Anthony Bertolacci is with us, Chief Strategy Officer at Sensor Tower. Thank you both for being with us. So, Anthony, I'll start with you. I mean, when you look at a name like Roblox, what was your takeaway from the week? Yeah, it was a great week for Roblox. They printed a very strong quarter. They beat on both the top and the bottom lines. Um, I think what, what's so impressive is that this game continues to gain steam across many platforms. So at Sensor Tower, we cover activity on the mobile application. Uh, no surprise in the third quarter, as a lot of Roblox users are going back to their regular lives, school and work post-summer, we actually saw faster gains on the mobile side than the company printed in terms of active users and engagement. We had active users uh, for the third quarter up 30%, and total hours, which is active users plus uh, time spent, at 30% also. Um, and what's just remarkable, I think when you think about it in the grand scheme of things, the average Roblox mobile user is spending about 58 minutes a day on the app. And that's without taking into account other modalities in which a player may be using the service. So on a PlayStation, on a PC, or, or somewhere else. So that's a ton of time. I mean, that's in the neighborhood of Instagram and Facebook and nearing YouTube and TikTok. So this is a platform where users are. And, and then it makes the compelling case that this is where brands and corporates need to be to reach those users. And I see Deutsche Bank has a buy rating, a price target of 50. Benchmark uh, maintained their buy rating, a price target of 46. Wedbush has a price target of 49 and outperform on Roblox. So certainly a lot of optimism surrounding this name, which year to date is up about 40 percent. Logan, what do you think about Roblox? Do you like this one? Would you say it's a buy still? Yeah, I mean, it's had a great run. It's had a great year and obviously a great earnings report that just came out. We're not buyers of it right here. I think this stock and, and kind of what they do leads to a, a broader sense of the overall market is where gaming is going in the future, which we believe is the metaverse. And more and more integrating, uh, just like the other panelists said, more buying and more companies coming into the universe of gaming and being able to sell things. I mean, the Roblox's biggest thing that they came out with and said was their highest earners and, and probably what led the stock up this week is saying that the online platform that they have users going on and buying different parts of their thing, different avatar skins, different things for inside of the app. And I think that's kind of an overall view of where the world of gaming is going into a metaverse world where there's commerce online and you're buying different things within a game with avatars. And, and that's kind of the path that we're looking for and seeing, okay, what companies are gonna do really well right here? I know we're not talking about it today, but Meta, in general, would be probably one of the companies that we would look at if we had a pullback. So a name like Meta you do like. It's interesting because, um, for example, I have two boys there. They were doing plenty of gaming, and I was buying a lot of skins and things. Um, that was during Fortnite days. Take Two got this huge bump. Um, you have Grand Theft Auto. That's coming out soon. What do you think of that, Anthony? Um, it sort of blew out all the other Take Two news off the page. The fact that there's going to be a GTA 6 trailer release next month. Um, I, I, I think it's to, to sort of what Logan said. The future of a lot of these big franchises and big games is cross-platform and do everything within this world. So while there may not be a mobile component of GTA 6 when it drops, um, there wasn't of GTA 5. Uh, I think it's fair to assume that at some point during this title's life cycle, there will be a mobile version of, of GTA 6 because they want to be everywhere that gamers are. They want to have this immersive experience where not only are they playing the game, but they're playing mini games within the game. They're, they're interacting with brands they're potentially making purchases. Um, I, I do think that that's where we're going. We, we saw a version of this with Call of Duty from Activision, where it was a very popular PC and console game for years, and they released a version of it on mobile, and now it's the second biggest game in Activision's portfolio, and one growing while they're having some challenges with their hyper-casual game. So uh, I think it's really exciting news. I mean, there's a little more to talk about with Take-Two and their Zynga portfolio and their mobile business being a little bit stagnant, but on the GTA front, I think it's really promising. I'm looking, I see the PS5 Slim Bundle will offer Modern Warfare 3 at no extra cost. I mean, as we get close to the holidays, here we go. Um, it's the battle of which console you're getting. Are you going to do this on your PC? You know, you're downloading the games. 
Um, Logan, you said you liked Meta, maybe on a pullback. How about, you know, is Activision Blizzard's going over to Microsoft? What else are you watching? I mean, what do you think could be hot for the holidays and could drive this space? Yeah, I mean, a view of the overall market, we like the mega cap names. I mean, they, they've done amazing this year compared to everything else. So we like Microsoft adding the addition of Activision Blizzard. And we do think, though, with that movement and taking Activision Blizzard kind of off the table, now investors have fewer choices to pick from as far as this space goes. So uh, Take Two is not one we own right now, but it actually looks pretty good from a technical factor. GTA 6 is obviously a huge component to what they're future sales are going to look like. I mean, GTA 5 has been one of the, I think it's the number two selling game of all time. So it has been such a huge component for what Take-Two has been doing. And ultimately, how they roll out this GTA 6 could be a huge part for them moving forward. I think the space as a whole, just like Anthony said, it's continuing and continuing to move towards that metaverse all over the place, interact with your entire life component. And we're going to see which companies really excel in that area. I think Microsoft is going to be a leader with their Activision acquisition, and we'll see how they move forward. But then also a meta and uh, and some of these companies. I think Take-Two also has an opportunity. I think Roblox is already in the space, so they could continue to take market share. Yeah, and quickly, Anthony, just any favorites that you really like, whether it's the stock or the games itself? Yeah, um, so what we've been seeing, uh, you know, to the meta point, um, you know, not necessarily from an investing perspective, but just in terms of the performance of the app, it's been an incredible year for Instagram and, and, and Facebook Blue's done pretty well too. So I think those social platforms just continue to gain steam and they find more and more ways to engage users. Um, there, there's a question as to how Facebook and Meta monetize all that increased engagement. Um, you have new services like Reels, uh, where they're just kind of catching up with having the ad volume be right and monetizing that additional engagement properly. But I, I think those big caps are really figuring it out and, and their services are finding more and more ways to keep users contained within those apps and doing more parts of their daily life there. Thank you both. Logan Gilland of Jewel Financial, Anthony Bartolacci of Sensor Tower. Thank you. Great to see you both.